Okay, so what's up guys? Today in this video we're going to be using Python to create our own little desktop application where we can save somebody's information like their phone number and where they live, how to contact them, stuff like that. It'll be our own little uh, directory or phone book, whatever you want to call it. Um, we're going to be using Python and tkinter. You don't have to do anything special to use tkinter. It comes installed when you download Python. And in the video to make this, we're going to be covering uh, dictionaries. We're going to be iterating over those dictionaries, and we're going to have some loops. So it's going to be very simple, and the whole point of this is just to show you how powerful Python is. And hopefully it'll get your mind running, and you can get a little creative and just make fun little projects with it, because the Python is strong. You just can't always see how strong it is. This is a good way to just visualize um, what you're what you're doing with Python and make it so it's prettier nicer to see Okay, so the first thing you are going to want to do is import tkinter, but not just import it Just get everything from it that way. You don't have to import the different widgets when you want to use them So we're going to say from tkinter Yep If, you, if I could spell it right from tkinter import Oh, that's all that asterisk means at the end, is uh, just grab everything from that file and or module, whatever it may be, and just give me everything. And uh, so when you want to start with tkinter, you want to make the screen, and it's simple, it takes two lines. You say root equals tk, and they say root is equal to main loop and that's all that is so if you run it there you go first little widget right here okay so I jumped ahead a little bit um, feel free to just start copying this down now and trying to figure it out while you're going through it and I'll explain it along the way and run it and describe it to you tell you how it works so uh, yeah as you see, we have FN label, which I'm using for first name label. And then it says label root, and then we have a text that says first name. So to break this down, we have to create our variable, which is this part right here. Uh, we have to create a variable for any kind of widget we want to put on the screen. And we're going to call that first name label, just so when we want to access it later on, if we ever want to access it, you can reference it and you know what it's related to. And then this part right here, the label, that always starts with a capital uh, at the beginning. That's how the widgets in tkinter work. And it's always followed up by root or whatever the, the parent is. So whatever you're saying root equals or whatever equals tk in the beginning is the first thing you're going to put in this box right here. Let's see a parent element, the parent widget, it's the screen. And then different widgets for tkinter will have a uh, different properties that you can use to manipulate the widget and change it to how you want it to look and design uh, i can go into that in later videos if you want uh, just let me know in the comments but that's uh gonna say first name and after that you see we have a pack so what this does is this is putting it on the screen Every time you create a widget, you have to also follow it up by placing it specifically on the screen. And there's two ways to do that with pack and grid. Pack throws it on there, and when you use grid, um, you can manipulate where it's on, on that page by using a row and column kind of setup. So I'm going to run this and show you and talk a little bit more about it. And you can see. Okay, so make it a little bigger. And as you can see, our label, first name, right here at the top, and then our first name entry. You type into that, you delete. We have our last name and our last name label, and our button. Um, we'll, and our next step, we'll add a little function to this so that when you click it, it's gonna grab the information from here, and we're gonna print it out to our console. Okay, so now that we have our basic UI for our users to input data for us, we want to connect this button, our submit button, to a function so that we can get the data they've entered into their entries. 
So we're going to call that submit. To start, we're going to give the button a command to submit. Notice I didn't use the, uh, the parentheses around this one I'm calling it. And command is a function you can use on buttons and other stuff in tkinter to call a function. So def submit buddy. And then for right now, I just do pass because I want to talk about a couple things real quick. So we're going to need to get our uh, user's entry from these two variables, right? And we have to save the data we get from those so we can use it. So you're kind of grabbing, well, if, if you've watched my other videos, you've seen how I've compared uh, variables to like storing data in a different box. What we're doing right now is we're taking the variable or the data from this box and we're going to create a new box to put it in that way we can use it somewhere else so we don't get what's inside the box confused it's a long complex way of saying it but you'll understand it in a second so we're going to want to say first is equal to fn entry dot get and dot get is how you access data inside of variables for a tkinter widget. And we're also going to want to do last is equal to fn. And so just to see this work, we're going to print first and last into our terminal. We'll go from there. Okay, so I'm going to first name Jacob H. I'm going to click submit. And. Okay, so there we go. You see it said Jacob, Jacob. Okay, so I didn't put L on. I put FN right here. I'll rerun it, show you again. But that's why that happened in case. There we go. A little example of debugging where you run into a problem. Gave us our answer, but I'll run it again. So we go first name, Jacob, H, click submit. And as you can see, once we clicked on the button, it ran everything inside this function. It said, okay. We're going to want to get our first name entry, which is this. What's that say? It said Jacob. So it put that in the first variable. So we're going to want to get last name entry. It did that, stored that in the last name variable, and then it printed those out to the terminal in their proper variables. <clears throat> okay, so for step four. Okay, so I did the same thing I did the last time where I went ahead and coded it so you can pause it and write this down or write or code along as I'm describing it. I'd rather just have it all out here so you can try and pick your own way doing it and I can describe it as I go. That way you see it and what it's doing. But um, okay, so our whole goal is to have a function that puts all the data that we need into a directory for us every time that button is clicked. And to start off by doing that, we need to create a way to, a, a place to store our data. And we're gonna be using a dictionary that I'm storing in a variable called directory. So after that, you want to create your function and give it two parameters, first and last name. It's going to have two parameters because this function requires outside uh, information to work. We have to have our first name and our last name from the user in order to make this function work and Inside the function here, it doesn't know what that is, so we have to tell the function whenever we call it. So that's what those are there for. And as you can see, we're using them right here. And if it looks weird, um, just think of it like this. Anything you have in here for your parameters will work through here as variables. And to give these parameters their information, all you had to do is call the function and put your own variables into there as a parameter. So as you can see, first, last, they correspond with these up here and these right here. So for our dictionary, each key is gonna be a number and then the value is gonna be the person's first and last name. That way our database looks organized and we can read it uh, easily and manipulate it easily. So we're gonna say x is equal to the length of the dictionary plus one. What that means is we are going to get the length of the dictionary and add one to it, 
And I want to do that so we can put that in the key and use it to organize our other key values. It's how we are going to dynamically create our own key, pretty much. And so now to create the key and value for the database, we're going to say this directory. We're going to call the name of our uh, dictionary, the variable or the key we want to put in for our main one, that number we created up here, is going to go here in square brackets. And then we're going to say equals and then our value, which is a dictionary that has a key and value pair of its own right here. And when we, yeah. After that, we want to return dictionary so it saves those and updates this directory, directory with the variables we just inserted. Last thing we want to do to make sure it all runs right is call it in this submit function so when they click on the button, it will automatically do this. And then we will print directory so that we can make sure it's working by seeing our output and return directory just for the, just to be safe. I know that probably sounds really complicated. Anytime um, I watch a video, I personally recommend watching it a couple times and sitting there and just breaking it down. Um, it might take you two or three times to understand it, but I'm using the, the more technical terms so that you get used to those instead of just hearing random stuff that just kind of makes sense now and doesn't help you later on. So a little bit of a headache now, we'll, you'll love it down the road. Okay, so now on to the next step where we output all the data onto the screen. I'll highlight what I changed for you real quick or what I updated. So I added the show contacts function and then I added uh, right here in the submit function, I just called that show contacts. And so now, like I said, what we want to do is we want to put our data on the screen. And as I said earlier, one function for one thing. Each function has its own purpose. We're going to keep iterating that. Okay, so what we're going to do in this function is each time that button is clicked for submit, we're just going to display the dictionary onto the screen. It's not going to look the prettiest, but um, I'll have a follow-up video on my website that I'll link in the description. It should be out a few days after this video of how we can just pretty it up and make it nicer for the viewer to see. But like I said, this is about Python and just kind of showing you how it works and what the potentials for it are. So first thing we're going to do is just create a label that lets our users know that this is the information that they've inputted. So I'm going to call it name label, say name label pack. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is use a for loop to iterate over the dictionary for the number of keys that are in it. Pretty much just saying for the number of items in dictionary, do it till there's no more items to look for. And then we are going to create a label that just prints out the dictionary. And so earlier when we were creating labels in our text field or text parameter, you saw how we use quotes to put on the screen what we want the user to see and how we used a variable we created before. And we're gonna do that same thing here, but we wanna show the value. So we're gonna say X, which is this, as I said, it coincides with the number of items in the dictionary. We're gonna say, get every key from this directory and just print that key value pair. So we're gonna run that Okay, so here it is. We're gonna say, I'm gonna say, Jacob H. Click submit. See what happens. There you go. So we have our first. We have our name, which, in the show contacts uh, box, you see here, and label is equal to name. That's this right here, and then where we have person label and our for loop. That's this. This is the dictionary that we created, and it's not showing our X, but. It is showing what we want the user to see, the person's first name and the person's last name. And so that is how you create a directory with Python. And like I said, I have more on this on my uh, blog and website. So check the link in the description. And thank you for watching.